A girlfriend embraces her natural beauty and reclaims the narrative of how society tells her she's supposed to look. She's confident in who she is, how she looks, and inspires other sisters to do the same. She is on a mission to be her best self so that she can support her family, friends, and community even more. Welcome to the Hey Girlfriend podcast, the place where we share how to get beautiful natural hair with less time and effort and hear from women about their real natural hair journeys. We also share stories from inspiring sisters, brothers, and black owned businesses who are doing great things in our community. I'm your host, Kaziah Dama, founder and CEO of Swirly Curly Curl College and the author of The Swirly Curly Method, the easy step-by-step guide to getting you the curls that you love. Hey girlfriend, welcome back to the Hey Girlfriend podcast. I'm your host, Kazaya Dama, and in today's episode, we are going to be diving deep in hair care routines, but also in home decor. Who would have known? Our guest on today's episode is, drum roll please, Justina Blakeney. Now, if you don't know about Justina, let me tell you about her. Justina Blakeney is a designer, artist, entrepreneur, speaker, and New York Times best-selling author. She is the founder and creative director of home decor brand Jungalo and the author of several design books, including Jungalo Decorate Wild and the new Bohemians book series. Last but not least, Justina was featured in Architectural Digest, Top 100, and on the cover of AD in June 2022. And also to let you know that Justina's newest collection has been held at Target nationwide for the last entire year. So you guys will see a lot of her collection, Jungalo with Opal House, it's amazing. And Justina actually talks a little bit about it in the podcast. Now, without further ado, let's hop right in. Welcome, Justina, to the podcast. Oh, thank you, Kasaya. So nice to be here. So, um, you guys, we just got to fan Justina down because she's so hot right now. Like, you are just on fire. And I have been seeing you on Facebook Marketplace, you know, when people are buying stuff and they're like reselling it. That's when you know you made it. Like, <laughs> I'm like, if okay, you're on eBay, I'll take it. like you made it too. <laughs> because it's like everybody's selling your stuff, you know, like reselling it, and you've just been in everybody's household. So, yeah, you are so hot right now. Um, a quick question: Did you have any pressure? today to like do your hair knowing you're going to be on a hair podcast and that we're going to be talking about your hair today a little bit but mostly because i am so low maintenance just in general with like my overall appearance i just tend to keep it very natural which oftentimes means i have a lot of frizz or that i just have my hair in a very lazy very schlumpy ponytail <laughs> with lots like a halo of frizz around it so i about a half hour ago was like oh i'm talking to kazaya and she said she was gonna film i have to like take this ponytail down <laughs> so i did the the thing that i did was that i took my ponytail down and ran my fingers through my hair like this and then put on some lipstick and i was like perfect oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look great. Um, I feel like this is your signature look, just similar to your brand, Jungalo. It's just kind of like wild, but just like artistic and self-expressed and just kind of natural at the same time. So I really love it. It looks oh, so thank good. You. Oh thank you. Well, I do, I do have on your leave-in conditioner. So it does yeah. make it feel a little healthier and a little like less uh what's the word i don't know it, it like it, it defines the curls more so. yeah more curl defined yeah, yeah it looks gorgeous okay yeah. so um quick question for everybody who's listening and if you are listening on apple podcast spotify you gotta tune in to youtube so you can actually see justina's mane it is so beautiful and gorgeous oh, and how many years have you been rocking this length oh it's been a while so i like my hair long i think it just like kind of makes me feel kind of goddessy and um so gosh i've i i over the course of my life my hair has been every possible length 
but I feel like maybe since I became a mom, really, I've worn it long. So that's at least like 10 years. Yeah. Um, and I've, I, I, I went through, I think it was like 20, maybe 17 or 18 when Tracy Ellis Ross had this like very cute kind of like, I don't know how to describe it. Maybe like a long Afro. Mm -hmm. It was like more round, but like shorter. Um, and so I was like, I'm going to do that. And so I cut my hair and I had bangs and it was just like long ground. And I think cause my face is also really round. I was like, Oh no. I don't <laughs> like so I spent the pandemic growing it back out to my earth mama goddess vibe. Yeah. Super long mane. <laughs> That is so funny. I remember that style and I, I've seen pictures of it and I actually think it looked really good on you. Um, oh, thank I, you. I didn't notice what you're expressing about your face, you know, being round and the hair being round, but I get it. You know, there's certain styles as well for my hair that I think also fit better too. You know, like I like my hair either in a really like kind of like shorter, like Afro Mm -hmm. or the longer when it's in the in-between I find it's a little like like not neither here or there yeah I think the in-between stage for me is challenging because it feels like I can't put it back and also mm. because I work so much like with my hands and you know painting and crafting and doing stuff like all the time I play music too so I just like I like my hair out of my face too so yeah um so yeah the in-between length is can be challenging but i do like having short hair it's been a long time since i've cut my hair super short mm -hmm. but like a halle berry kind of like halle berry energy mm -hmm. yeah i, <laughs> I did had see that, that style too. in college and it was really fun um so sometimes i flirt with the idea of just like cutting it all off but i'm not there yet <laughs> <laughs> And so from your experience, has the maintenance on short hair been more than long hair or vice versa? What oh, would you short, say? Short hair is way easier, way easier. Okay. It's just like less versatile. So mm -hmm. I'm someone who kind of likes to be a little bit of a chameleon and I do have fun playing dress up and like making myself look very different um, mm -hmm. from one day to the next, just, you know, changing my vibe. And when I have short hair, I kind of feel like I'm a little bit stuck in one vibe. The only thing that helps that is that I can like fit hats. Because <laughs> with my hair now, like I pretty much can't really wear hats. My hair is just like too big. Yeah. So it just doesn't really work. But when my hair is short, I always like accumulate like a very rad hat collection. <laughs> hats are so fun. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. I cannot fit a hat on my head. It just pretty <laughs> just much like just bounces off. Yeah, it bounces. You like put it on and it goes, ring. it like squishes right back up. So the oh hair is God. like, yeah, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is so funny. Okay, so um, I would love for you to take us back, you know, way, way, way back when you were a little girl growing up and describe to us like how was your hair and what styles did you wear and what was just like your experience yeah so gosh i have always had curly hair <laughs> i feel like the texture of my hair has changed um a lot so when i was little i think my hair was a little bit more fine my curls were a little bit more defined um and i grew up not being super precious about my hair um like just tr wanting to try out lots of different stuff and you know i know you know my my older sister faith um so having a sister that was two and a half years older than me and watching her you know do different fun styles and things like that with her hair was always kind of inspiring for me and faith was always very eccentric so like i remember you know in, co in high school she like chopped all her hair off and bleached it blonde and i mean this was in the 90s and i was like oh that looks so cool and she was always like edgier than me yeah <laughs> so i had i had her to look up to and sort of also just realize like we can have fun with our hair it doesn't have to be this um this serious thing and and so i did i remember um gosh when i was about i think i was about nine or ten um 
we shave both faith and i both shaved like the bottom half of our hair just because the hair is like so thick and i was like oh i felt so cool and i would like put my hair up in a bun and it would be shaved from like the back side <laughs> down and um it, it helped just because my hair is so thick so it would mm -hmm. also just get really hot in in the summers or when we were doing athletics and that sort of thing so that was the style i rocked for a long time and then i think Oh gosh, I did something really funny in um, eighth grade. I cut off all my hair, which was really long at the time. I, I wonder if I can find a photo for you. I probably can. But I kind of like had this flash that I wanted to like keep some long curls. And so I had like two long curls coming down the front. <laughs> Like oh everything goodness. else was super short. Eventually, I just like ended up cutting them off. But like in hindsight, I was like, "Wow, that was actually not that cute." <laughs> but we experimented oh so much. I had so much fun. I did a lot more experimenting with like cuts and lengths. I had a bob for a long time. Um, you know, and then I had, you know, because I was in eighth grade when I cut my hair super short, like all throughout high school, my hair was just like basically growing back out. Yeah. So sophomore year, I had a fro, you know, like I was getting, you know, longer and longer until, until in my senior year photos, my hair is like, like it is now basically like long and curly. Um, I've never played too much with straightening my hair. I think I've, I've always just embrace my curls and like having curly hair i feel like it fits my personality and i've always just thought it was cool i just i like how you know voluminous it is mm -hmm. <laughs> when i started high school um i was a freshman in high school when faith was a senior and mm -hmm. they used to call faith lion because of her like mane her big lion's mane and so they called me little lion <laughs> <laughs> so cute. <laughs> it's very cute. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that. And so um your parents, so your mom is Jewish and your dad's black. Mm -hmm. How would you say their like culture and family upbringing kind of influenced you and your the way you look at your hair? Yeah, good question. So I feel like my mom God bless her. She's amazing and I love her. But it did feel like she was a little overwhelmed with my hair. <laughs> like most moms. Early, yeah. early on, like it took some relatives to be like, no, don't brush it when it's dry. Like brush it when it's wet with conditioner in it and that kind of stuff. Because I do remember, you know, running and hiding when it was time <laughs> to get my hair brushed. Like so, my daughters. <laughs> I had a very, and I actually still do have a fairly low threshold for pain. So I'm just mm. like, really not that person who's going to sit there for three hours and like have someone pulling on my scalp. It's just not the vibe. Oh my God. Um, but, you know, I, I think I, I did grow up with like an appreciation and love of my curls. And, you know, on my dad's side of the family, we always had folks um, living with us. So my cousin Rwanda lived with us for a long time. My auntie Gladys lived with us for a long time. And um, they usually wore their hair straight. And so I also remember some funny stories growing up of like um, some cousins on my Jewish side, um, like confiding in me that they thought black women's hair was just naturally straight. Cause like mm. growing up in like wow. in the eighties and nineties, like there were so few black women who wore their hair natural. Yeah. Um, like even on TV and stuff like that. And even, you know, my family as well. And so I, w I remember being really taken aback because she thought that black women's hair was naturally straight. And I was like, no, <laughs> like, that's not the vibe. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think in general, I feel like my hair is very particular and like very unique to, to me and my mix. And mm -hmm. I mean, even Faith's hair texture is like quite different from mine. I feel like um, I've never really encountered too many people who I feel like have a similar hair texture or something. So for me, it's always been something that um, just felt really special and really unique to 
to who I am and my particular mix and and my own vibe. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I had a friend, this is when I actually first met Faith. And I had a friend who I was talking to and she's like, oh, have you seen those girls? They have this like really long hair and they design and all of this. And she sends it to me and I'm like, oh my God, that's my friend. <laughs> but people, you know, I, I would say even probably still to, to today, probably identify you, you know, by your hair as well. It is a signature look. And it seems like you've had a pretty healthy relationship with your hair. Like, you know, your exploration with your hair was just more of like, like you said, cutting, dyeing and stuff like that. Whereas a lot of women, you know, mixed race, black, melanin skin or anything like that will often, you know, play around with like wigs, weaves, texturizers, relaxers. Have you done any of that braids or anything? I've done braids and okay. I love having my hair in braids. However, that tender headed, <laughs> just a little it. girl who's still like not super down to sit there for like five or six hours and get my hair braided. Um, I just don't have the patience for it. And any time that I've actually been like, okay, I'm going to do it and gotten my hair braided, it like just doesn't last for like, I just have to take them out pretty mm -hmm. soon because like I get headaches and it's just like, I just couldn't deal with it. My, my threshold for pain just wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I haven't, I haven't, and I've never relaxed my hair. I've gotten blowouts in the past, but pretty rarely, honestly. And um, also again, like just, it's the patience. I just don't have the patience to sit there. It takes like a long time to to blow my hair out and um and then like you know i'll take a shower the next day and i'm not that great at like protecting it and then it's like puffs back up and i'm like this wasn't worth it so i think like if it was oh, a little yeah. easier or like more painless or whatever but i'm when it comes to like beauty stuff i'm about convenience you know mm -hmm. and keeping it pretty natural so i just try and embrace my and i'm not about pain for beauty. It's just not mm -hmm. my thing. <laughs> I've like tried little things here that I'm like, no, that's not me. I'm not doing that. Um, but yeah, you know, I think it's fun. I think it's fun to wear my hair in different textures and different styles. And I would play a lot more if it didn't feel like such an investment of like time and pain and energy and stuff like that. So I think just oftentimes just for convenience, I just keep it like it is. And I think it's, it's, um, it's fun. And it's who I am. I love that. That's great. That's very similar to me. I would say now, when I was younger, it was all about whatever I needed to do and pay, you know, to get my hair to do something that I felt comfortable in, mm. because my, you know, kind of hair journey has been so different. It was more of like the regular black girls hair journey where I've had relaxers, texturizers and all of that. But it got to a point where I felt very inauthentic mm -hmm. and I love to swim. I love to work out. And so I was always dealing with like the puff up. And then it's like, mm -hmm. finally, I was like, you know what? This just doesn't work for me anymore. And mm -hmm. I will say embracing my natural hair over the last like 15 years has been so rewarding. So, you know, um, being able to be self-expressed and just like overall, like being more myself has been mm -hmm. just better on so many levels. Mm. So I'm definitely on that, that side of things now. And, you know, when people ask me like, Oh, what do you do with your hair? It's very similar. It's like, Oh, I just like put some water and like shake it out. And, you know, a lot of our customers, it's really curly are always like, cause I have like, how do I do this? And how do I do that? And I think they're always a little shocked at what I say, you know, I'm like water, water, water. And, you know, like let your hair kind of do what it wants to do. As long as you're supporting it with the right products, and the white right routine like your hair is going to become what your hair is supposed to become mm -hmm. not something I else so i love that yeah. yeah i also um yeah i grew up in berkeley so i feel like just growing up in a place where people are kind of encouraged to like let their freak flag fly <laughs> and yeah. like just be themselves and whatever that means i think mm -hmm. i did grow up in an environment both in my family but in the greater context of the community that i grew up in where it was, you know, a little more normal to just wear your hair natural or, you know, there were lots of kids in my school growing up that had big afros and that sort of thing. Whereas I feel like in other places around the country, that might not be the case. Mm -hmm. So 
Um, yeah, I, I will say, and this is almost like a little bit paradoxical, but I feel like I present as more black when I wear my hair straight, which is like mm. very odd, but I feel like I look very ethnically ambiguous with my hair curly. And so sometimes I'm like, oh, like sometimes I have an urge to want to like blow up my hair so I can feel like I like can present more black, but that's like total oh ego gosh. in my head, like this or that, you know, not knowing how other people see me or being in my head about how other people see me. But ultimately yeah. at this stage in my life, I am who I am. <laughs> yeah. I look like what I look like. And that's, that's it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. We have to see this picture of your hair straight because I've never seen your hair straight. Okay. I'll oh, I really want it. And we'll plug yeah. it in, in the YouTube video if you can yeah. find it. Yeah. 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 I've got I'll look as well. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Um, and something that you said through that, I was like, okay, so I grew up in Sacramento. So NorCal, yay, yay. Um, yay, so yay, yay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. So when we got on the, when we started the podcast, Justina said um, something that brought nostalgia back to me and made me feel at, at home. And so if anybody's familiar with Northern California, there's a word that we say, which is hella. And or to describe like it's hecka or hella or a lot of something. And she said it and I was like, oh my gosh, like taking me back home. It's so amazing. <laughs> you can take the girl out of Berkeley. <laughs> yeah. um, but you describing, you know, how it was growing up in Berkeley. I grew up in Sacramento, the capital of California. And like everybody, like the goal there is to work for the state and get a state job and like retire and that's it, you know? And I have a lot of friends from high school and college that ended up doing that. My brother actually works for the state. And so everything you said, I'm like, oh, that makes sense why, you know, my hair was supposed to be straight, you know, conservative and very tidy. And that was like the look I was going for because none of the black girls at school had their hair natural. It was always straight. And I was the one wearing my hair natural until I was about 10, until my mom was finally convinced to give me a relaxer. Um, and I like begged her and begged her and I'm like, oh, okay, that's probably where that came from. But you know, if I was in Berkeley, maybe it would have been a little different. Mm -hmm. um, Cause yeah, it was, ne it was not Afrocentric at all. And I had, you know, certain like patterned scarves I would wear on my head that were very like African and stuff. And I just felt like, oh my God, like everyone's looking at me, like, where are the lions and the elephants? <laughs> like, you know, it was just, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to get away from it, but now mm. we embrace it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, walk us through your, your hair routine. What do you do like on a weekly basis? Um, you know, you can just kind of sum up, you know, maybe your routine, what products you put in your hair and what are mm -hmm. some of your go-tos? Yeah. So I, again, very low maintenance, very chill. Um, but I I shampoo my hair about twice a week. I love your shampoo, the Mango Tango one. It's yeah. so awesome. So I definitely use that. Um, I also, um, every time I shower or bathe, I condition my hair. And I usually either just leave a little bit of the conditioner in my hair or um, or use a leave-in conditioner. And I brush it out while I'm, while it's wet with conditioner in it. Um, and then I feel like one of the most important parts of my hair care process and journey is the way I like let my hair dry or get the water kind of like out of my hair when, um, when I get out of the shower or bath, I'm like a big bath lady. So I take baths like almost every day. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> it's like my way of unwinding and relaxing and having some me time. Um, but when I'm getting out of the bath, I will like stand up in the bath and I flip my hair over. So I'm kind of bent over with my hair kind of dangling in the water. <laughs> and I just start kind of scrunching my hair, um, mm -hmm. from the bottom up and like squeezing any excess water out. Um, and I do that for like almost until I like can't <laughs> stand bent over like that anymore. <laughs> But, you know, a, a good minute or two, like squeezing out the excess water and then I flip it back and then I crunch it again, just like kind of for those of you watching on YouTube, like kind of this movement where I'm just kind of like mm -hmm. helping my curl find its bounce, mm -hmm. getting getting her groove back. 
<laughs> my cousin Yoshi calls her hair Fiona. I feel like I should. Oh be, my god! I should be naming my my wig. I should. That was a question a for today. I was going to ask you: Do you have a name for your mane? I don't, but maybe, maybe if, if if you're listening somewhere where uh, people can write comments, maybe yes. you can give me some suggestions for what my hair's name should be. Um, but yeah, and then I just let it dry um, naturally, and that's it. That's that's my whole that's my whole thing. So amazing yeah it, it's working for you your hair looks gorgeous and beautiful i have Thank to you. try that that squinching thing i actually don't really do that um but there's this new thing happening it's called like the bowl method i don't mm -hmm. know if you've seen it where it's similar to what you're doing except you have a bowl in front of you and you you continuously like dip your hair like in mm -hmm. the water and then you squinch it mm -hmm. so it's kind of like you're re-wetting it when it has all the product on it and mm -hmm. then somehow that water in the squinching it is supposed to have it curl up more and people have they said it's amazing Ooh, so i haven't tried that's it interesting maybe i'll just like lean further down in the bathtub <laughs> to get the water <laughs> get the water it's a big big ass bowl yeah <laughs> you know i will i will say whenever i do an epsom salt bath and um you know my hair is in it and everything and then i you know, maybe wash and then I just do everything in the bath water. I notice my hair actually feels softer. I'm like, does this salt have something to do with it? Um, yeah, yeah I've paid more attention. attention quite a bit. And yeah. I, it's not something I like plan to do all the time, but whenever I do, it, it's like my hair is like softer and I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. okay. a little mm -hmm. bit more like natural oils from the skin as well, maybe helping it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who knows? Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, I love that. And then for sleep, what do you do for sleep? Is there Make a thing, girl? <laughs> <laughs> this is good. I mean, I'm like you know? not teaching. I'm like, I don't have a method. Yeah. I, what do I do for sleep? I hit my head to that pillow and go. <laughs> and I'm out. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then what about like in the morning? Is there anything that you may add to your hair? A little bit of water or something when you get it in your bun or is it just bun? Bun and go. It depends. I think if I'm like doing something real, <laughs> that day, like where I need to feel like I look presentable in some way, shape, or form, then you know I'll usually shower and do my little squeezing, scrunching thing to just to have my curls um, be where where I like them to be. Um, but otherwise, yeah, sometimes I'll just throw it back in a ponytail. Um, a style I've been wearing my hair more in lately is kind of like a tight, like slicked back ponytail. I call mm. myself Justine when I wear my hair like that. I like <laughs> sort of don't even feel like the same person, but like, and I'll take one of those hair brushes that has like thick, tight bristles. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, just kind of bring it back into a really tight ponytail. Um, yeah. And Justine looks fire when she wears yeah. her hair like that. Any baby hairs? Do you do any of the little baby hairs I yet? I don't. I feel Girl, like. Girl, you're missing out. It takes it to I another level. I have to get it together, <laughs> Kaziah. I have to get it together. Oh, my God. Just let, you know, just lick your finger and just pull a little out. And it just changes the game. I feel a little more sass. Like, mm. it just, I don't know what it does about Sounds the baby like hair. something Justine needs to get. Yes. To make happen yeah. all right I'll, yeah. I'll have a talk with her about that okay <laughs> <laughs> okay i love that okay so um those are awesome tips and you know again this is just you know you seem like to just go with the flow and very common is like when you do have to get ready for something that's when you put a little more effort in and i tell people that i'm like you know let's be realistic about curly hair like people are not doing their hair every day and you know of course on social media we'll see you know people that have their curls looking so good but i'm like they did their hair that day you know what i mean mm -hmm. or you know they have a different you know care routine that probably requires a little bit more of you know time and effort put into it so mm -hmm. i love that you're being so real with it because my routine is very similar as well mm -hmm. like today i did put in a little bit more effort because we knew we were going to be recording mm -hmm. um so yeah, so I'd love to just talk about um, Jungalo and talk about design a little bit more because I think um, your brand Jungalo is, like I mentioned, really represents also your hair, which is like kind of letting it be free, letting it be wild, letting it be what it is. Will you share with us, um, I'd like to share what kind of inspired you to create Jungalo and then we'll go from there. Yeah, so 
Jungalo actually started as my design blog. And it was really just a way for me to figure out how to share my creativity with the world. At the time, which was in 2009, I was a creative freelancer for hire. So I was pretty much assisting a lot of small, mostly women owned businesses with anything that they needed help with on the visual side. So branding, marketing, social media, which was like very fledgling back then, but it existed. Um, I was doing copywriting, I was designing logos, websites, all that type of stuff. And really, as a, in the beginning, it was just a way for me to kind of try and build a little community and find new clients and show off the work I was doing. And um, as I began to blog more and more, my interest in home decor started to increase and, and develop. And what I sort of realized was that there wasn't that many people or really anyone that had a larger platform or a larger blog that was um, showing things off in a style that sort of spoke to me in the home decor world. So my style is very colorful. It's full of pattern. I've always had a huge passion for house plants. Um, I've also done a ton of traveling in my life and I love to surround myself with pieces from different parts of the world. I love folk art and handmade items and pieces that tell a story. And so for me, um, I just decided to start kind of sharing more of my own style. And that could have been in home decor or that could have been in apparel. Um, and little by little, um, as my blog began to kind of get more traction, I started to have people coming and asking me for help more with that type of thing, as opposed to the branding and the graphic design stuff that I was doing at the time. So I took leaps of faith and I was like, yeah, I've never designed anybody's house before, but I love to try. And so that's really where I started working in home decor more and little by little jobs just kept coming in. Um, anything from styling, I started doing styling for magazines to um, yeah, designing people's homes, designing boutiques, doing all sorts of things. And because I had that background in graphic design and branding and all of that, it was very easy for me to kind of transform the blog into a brand when I was ready to, to kind of make that leap. And so, um, so that's what I did after the blog had kind of grown a, a large community and a large following. I um, I wrote a book called The New Bohemians, which became a New York Times bestseller. And that really gave me the platform to start creating products and start offering those products to our community online. And um, that was in 2015 that the, the book came out. We opened our online shop in 2017. And here we are today with our line at Target and um, and lots of other home decor collections and lifestyle collections. And my day to day nowadays looks a lot like designing a lot of products, which is such a beautiful marriage of my passion for graphic arts, graphic design, surface pattern design and home decor. Oh, I love that. And so tell us about um, the Target and Opal House um, collaboration. What can people find or what are they going to see? I mean, I see it all the time. I go to Target, which is like every week. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, in case someone doesn't know, um, yeah, share share with us about the collaboration. Yeah. So in uh, 2021, we launched uh, Opal House Design with Jungalo. And so it's a super exciting collaboration. So Opal House is Target's in-house home decor brand that has kind of a boho vibe. And so I'm currently designing the collections for Opal House. And so what you can find is pretty much everything for the home that's um, designed with uh, my artwork, uh, pattern work, and really fun, vibrant colors, patterns. It's like a way to kind of easily and affordably transform your home into a place that feels fun and vibrant and alive. And so you can find the collection at Target stores nationwide and at Target.com. Yes. And I love the collection because I feel like with home decor, I, you know, honestly, I'm not that great at it. I'm getting better. And I've been that person where like you see stuff online, you're like, okay, I'm going to do my room like that. 
And then you go and get everything you put it in. You're like, it doesn't look like that. You're like, yeah. it looks worse, you know, and, <laughs> and you spend quite a bit of money. And I find that in my opinion, it's either really stale or it's just not alive. And it just isn't self expressed, you know, mm. and then with your stuff, which we do have some of your stuff for our bathroom, which is amazing. Yeah. You're able to like, just get them, you know, we, I'm going to share from my experience. I get the bath mats. I have, you know, the hand towels, I have the regular towels and I'm like, I don't even need to do that much, but put a plant and a picture up and like, it feels like there's life in here. And so that's what mm. I really love about your brand is I'm a simple, like a very simple person and I find like I go for simple things, but then everything's too simple in my house. And so mm -hmm. then it's like your stuff just really brings the pop, the flavor, the culture, the fun. And um, it's so needed. It's so needed in the de design space. So I love that. Um, and so I have some more questions for you that I would love for you to share. Okay. So um, I would love for you to share maybe your top three suggestions or top tips for somebody who wants to redesign their home, like what can they focus on that's going to help change everything really quick? Yeah, great question. So I like to make these tips. Um, I like to offer up these type of tips for both people who rent and for people who own their homes. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I would say the first and easiest way to just completely transform is to paint um, or to change the color of the walls. I think it's um, really only sort of recently and in um, very in certain cultures that uh, like the US American culture and European cultures as well, that like white walls is kind of dominant right now. However, um, white walls can be great. But at the same time, if you really want to create a cozy atmosphere in your home, or if you want to do something that's not that expensive, that can dramatically change the look and feel, painting the walls is, in my opinion, the easiest thing you can do. So that's like okay. first, you can paint your walls. If you're renting, you can still paint your walls. You just have to repaint them when you leave. Yeah. Okay, parentheses. <laughs> but there's also like peel and stick wallpaper or things like that that you can also do to change the feeling of your walls, which will be a huge, huge difference. Um, my next tip is textiles. So I'm a textile junkie. I absolutely love textiles. And for those of you who might not be familiar, textiles is just like a fancy word for fabric. So. Mm -hmm. um, that could be anything made out of fabric, whether that's pillows, blankets, um, a tablecloth, uh, things mm. like that. So what I often will do is if I'm tired of the way my sofa looks, I'll take like a beautiful vintage quilt or a quilt from our Opal House Target line and just drape it over the back of the sofa and you know switch out a couple of throw pillows and that's just such an easy way to quickly transform the look and feel of something you can right now it's very in to have like very drapey tablecloths over even mm. like side tables or bedside tables and that sort of thing and so you can find beautiful old fabrics or again like go to jungalo.com find some cool tablecloths things like that throw them up all of a sudden you just added a jolt of color of pattern to the space and then when you get tired of it or you want to switch it out or you want to have a different vibe, you just take it off. It could not be more simple. So paint is first, textiles is second. And then my last tip is plants. I think plants are finally starting to get their due in the design industry. But in my opinion, there's just nothing that can breathe life into a space like a plant. And so, so often you'll walk into a room It'll feel so flat. It'll feel like it has no personality, no emotion, no life. You can put a big, like you've got behind you a beautiful fiddle leaf on one mm -hmm. side. You've got a rubber tree on the other side. Such like big, they have big leaves, right? So they really create a, a kind of a sculptural statement in the home. And so one large plant in a corner of a room can honestly turn the entire room from feeling like dead or drab into making it feel lively and uh, pops of color and just that living energy, right? That plants bring into a space. So paint, yeah. textiles and plants. Oh, that is so good. And that's like so easy because 
even if you have those things, you can move them around, you know, even if you get bored in, in one room, it's like an investment that's not going to go out of style. And even like the textiles, like you can take that, you know, whatever, if it, even if it's a scarf, you know, you can get a really large scarf. You can wrap that around. You can wrap your hair oh, like, at night. The wrong. You can, yeah. <laughs> take it off your window, wrap it around your hair. <laughs> exactly. That is amazing. So I love, love that. And the paint, I haven't dabbled in that yet. Um, I think because it's always the fear of repainting from wherever I'm renting and stuff, but I'm going to, I'm definitely going to have to try that. That's amazing. Yeah, Thank you for those like tips. Statement wall sometimes like the wall behind your bed, mm -hmm. like that can just make such a big difference. Just add so much warmth to your, to your space. And this is probably a good time for me to plug my books because all yeah. three of my books have so many accessible tips about how to transform your space and so many inspira inspiration photos and a ton of ideas that you can adopt for your own home that are affordable, accessible, easy to do. You can really transform your space in like one weekend. So I love that. I love that. And then you also have wallpaper on your site as well. Yes. My friend has it in her in yeah. her home. Yeah. Peel and yeah. stick wallpaper, especially yeah, if you're renting and you're concerned about you know, leaving the walls as is in one weekend, you can throw up peel and stick wallpaper and it will really transform your space. I love that. So good. Awesome. Well, Justina, please let us know where everyone can find you. Give us the social, the websites and all of that. Yes. All right. So you can find me at Justina Blakeney on Instagram and all the other fun places. And we are at the Jungalo and at jungalo.com. And at Target. And at Target.com. Yes. <laughs> Target. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much. This was so great to hear your story. Oh, thank you. This was so fun. I like loved talking about my hair. I don't get to talk about my hair that often. So whatever her name is. Yeah, we're going to have to get a name for her. <laughs>